back to the boat we thought we'd do a bit of a different video today a few people have asked us the question about what was the experience like buying a boat on the other side of the world so this is a bit of a video about what it was like as Australians traveling to and then buying a boat in Europe Living life every day let it die not okay all I want and I pray so why why buy a boat in Europe and sail it back to Australia well if, if you have a look around the sailing YouTube you'll see it is a very popular idea and there's good reason that you're seeing these Australians buying boats in Europe and sailing them back down under and the reason for that is that there's some pretty good deals to be had the European boat market is um, a little bit more depressed and it's just such a a, so much of a bigger market than the Australian market would you make money doing it I, I personally don't think so but I think if you're after an adventure and you aim at a more modern production boat possibly X charter and with a plan to buy it in Europe and sell it back to Australia it is an economical way of having a seeing the cultural experiences of the Mediterranean having a fantastic time sailing in Europe plus then the milk run home across the Atlantic on something like the Ark cruising in the Caribbean and then cruising across the Pacific I think it's got a lot to recommend it so how do we start to go about looking for boats in Europe Yacht World obviously we started sending off bunches of emails but I reckon probably 75% of the emails we sent went unanswered. Um, we actually found that pretty frustrating. I think trying to get European brokers, particularly in countries like France and Italy, to take an email inquiry from Australia seriously was not easy. Plus I think the nature of some of these markets is if you're there in person, if you're Johnny on the spot, you're probably gonna have more success than sending emails. So I don't really have a great answer here in terms of the best way to find your boat in Europe. Again, I think if you're after an ex-charter boat or if you're after a fairly modern, say, catamaran multi-hull, going over there, blocking out a couple of week period, getting into it, engaging with some of the bigger, more reputable brokers in key areas like Greece or Croatia and going in and just being decisive would probably be my advice to others depending on what your intention are and depending on what it is you are looking for. We decided we really liked the Moody's and we, we started honing in on the Moody's so we hopped on the Moody Owners Forum which is just a fantastic resource for anyone thinking of owning a Moody. We got in contact with a guy who was selling a Moody 425 in Malta. I actually knew with the boat a family that we, we know of was sailing on this boat previously so I knew a lot about the boat and he was fantastic. We went back and forth on email and he answered any question I ever had so in the end that's what worked for us. So once you've found a boat you want to buy, the actual process of buying, I, I guess it depends. If you've found a boat that's with a broker then you would go through the process with that broker. You could obviously buy a boat privately and undertake the transaction yourself. It is straightforward enough to do, but it does obviously carry an element of risk and a bit of trust there, depending on how you go through it. You can use things like escrow. In the end, in our case, we had found a boat privately. We were looking to buy a boat privately, but for peace of mind, what I then did was I engaged a boat broker after the fact, once I decided that this was the boat in fact we were going to buy them, they do offer this as a service. They're a large UK based uh, boat broker but they do have offices throughout Europe and they do business, they sell yachts all throughout Europe. And I got them to handle the actual process. Firstly they did a title search for me and I got them to actually handle the money in terms of being the third party handling the exchange of contracts and the exchange of money back and forth between me and the seller. Would I do it that way again? Look, in the end with us, we had such a good relationship, I think, with the seller, the previous owner of the boat, that it was probably not that necessary. And obviously it was a service that came with a fee and it was a fee that I paid. Uh, but I think having that security being able to go out, look for a boat privately, but then having that security to engage a broker to handle the transaction when you're buying a boat on the other side of the world, 
that's what worked best for us. So Australian registration, I guess this is obviously specific to Australians or those that are looking to register their boat in Australia anyway. It, you, you see a lot of questions around this and around how to get a boat Australian registered. Firstly, I'll just say the Australian Shipping Office is has been shipping registry, I should say, is absolutely fantastic. For a government office, you will not find a more helpful group of people. So get in contact with them, ask your questions, hit them up on email, and they will get back to you and, and they will answer any questions or concerns you have and step you through the process. And that's what they did with us. They stepped us through the process and we were very comfortable with the whole thing. Um, we did provisional registration, which is something that I would recommend because it means it gets you sailing as quickly and easily as possible. So I would suggest that you do do the provisional registration, but it depends on what your intentions are and what your circumstances are. I guess the thing I would call out is there is a requirement to get the bill of sale, an original copy of the bill of sale back to the shipping office in Australia. Now, in our case, this was the cause of a bit of delay because the thing got lost in the mail, didn't it? as it does. So I guess the only thing I would say in the registration process is factor in some time for delay. So yeah, the, we sent the, the bill of mail back to Australia. We got it pretty quickly. Yeah, we thought we'd had the whole process streamlined. It got lost in the mail and we all sat in Malta for months uh, waiting for this, sending additional copies, signing additional copies with the seller and trying to figure out what it is we could do about this. The other thing that I think can cause some delays, although it didn't in our case, is that there's a, you need a deletion certificate from the country in which the boat is currently registered. In our case, that went pretty quickly. It happened in a matter of days, but I have heard stories of it taking weeks or even um, in one circumstance, months. I think that was someone who was in Turkey, if I recall correctly. So that can also be a point of delay. So. I think probably my advice there would be factor that in and the other consideration and all of that is while the boat is not registered you technically can't sail it you can't navigate on a boat that's unregistered you know sure I mean people obviously do things in the cover of darkness and you know that's up to the individual but uh, there might be a point where you've bought this boat it's all gone fantastically. You're ready to go. You're ready to sail. Great excitement. Um, and there is going to be a holding pattern while you wait for this registration process to occur. If it's something that you're thinking of, if it's something that you, you're sitting there watching this going, yeah, this is something we've considered and you've got questions or anything I haven't covered and you want to um, hit us up, please do. Uh, more than happy to, to share and you know help others. Uh, please subscribe if you want to continue to follow our adventures and if this video has been of any help give us a like thanks <laughs>